Water and magma are two of the most powerful tools that you can utilize in Dwarf Fortress, but how do you get them to work for you? This is a screw pump, and here's your friend. Dwarves will stand on the rear tile when operating it, which will draw liquids from the Z-level below the tile behind the pump. This is then pushed forward from the front tile. Here I am wanting to fill this room with water so that the floors become muddy and suitable for farms. First I'm going to build the materials for the screw pump at a carpentry workshop. An enormous corkscrew, a pipe section, and a wooden block. Then from the build menu, open the machine component section and select screw pump. Before placing it, use lowercase u, m, k, or h to select the appropriate orientation. And to draw water from this brook, I will place it on the edge. Then to ensure that the water is correctly funneled down this hole that leads to my farm, I'll surround it in walls. Now after giving a dwarf the pump operation labor, by highlighting the pump with lowercase q, you can give an order for them to begin manually pumping. Then once it's filled up enough, simply highlight it again to cancel it. Waiting for the water to clear evaporate can take quite a while, so an easy way to quickly drain it is to dig a channel that goes down into the caverns, as I am currently sending this dwarf to do. Wait, that's not good. Now that the water is mostly gone, farms can be built here. Just like water, magma can be pumped in the same way. Here I am funneling this magma down into a chamber, below where I plan to build my magma powered workshops and furnaces. This does require that the screw pump is built out of components that are all magma safe. If just one of them isn't, the screw pump will break. This one has an iron corkscrew and pipe section, as well as an orthoclase stone block. To check which materials are magma safe without resorting to the wiki, use lowercase z to open the status screen and then go into the stone section. This also shows which stone contains which kind of metal ores. Now when it comes to more elaborate pump and mechanical setups, especially ones that you want perpetually operating, you are going to want power generators to automate them. This seems much more complicated than it really is, as all you need is a windmill or water wheel, connected to what you would like powered through axles and gear assemblies. To build a water wheel, all you need is three wooden logs and a flowing water. If you have a brook rather than a river, you will need to channel it down one layer, in order to allow water to properly flow through the water wheel. It will also require some other kind of machinery to anchor it in place. For this I'm going to build a gear assembly, which is also found in the machine components section of the build menu, and requires one mechanism from a mechanics workshop. The water wheel can then be built. But be careful because if anything happens to the gear assembly, the water wheel will collapse. Now these just need to be linked together with axles. Horizontal axles are used for the X and Y axis, while vertical ones transmit power across Z levels. Anytime the direction of power is shifted, you will need a gear assembly at the intersection to transfer power between them. Each tile of axles will add an additional one unit of power required, while gear assemblies will add five. This connection just requires a straight line so I'll build a horizontal axle and expand it to the correct size. But note that by pressing lowercase s, you can change the direction of the axles from east and west to north and south. Water wheels generate 100 units of power, which exceeds that required by the pump, meaning it will instantly start once the connection is constructed. The power requirements and amount generated can be checked by highlighting machinery with lowercase q. Windmills work in much the same manner, but only give 40 or 20 power depending on your fortress's location, and zero if built somewhere that logically would have no wind, such as inside the caverns. Before being able to be built, they require a gear assembly or vertical axle directly below their central tile. So first I built a tower of axles and gear assemblies underground, before placing a windmill on the surface above them. I'll then connect the windmill to this gear assembly on the surface through this overly long connection. 
This time, I want to be able to manually stop and start the pump, so before making the final connection, I'm going to build a lever from the trap section of the build menu. Then once it's built, highlight it with Q, and it can be linked to the gear assembly. And note that levers require no power or direct connection to operate. You can see that pulling the lever halts the flow of power. Now after completing the connection and building a second windmill to generate enough power, I'm going to pull the lever again and the screw pump will immediately start. Then when I want it to stop, I can just pull the lever again. However, don't connect the lever to any gear assembly that is supporting the other machinery, as when disabled, it can all collapse. Once you understand how pumps and power work, it becomes easier to build more elaborate systems, the most common of which is a pump stack, to quickly raise water or magma up sea levels. I am planning to build a drowning chamber that will raise water from the caverns and pump it into the chamber I've dug out. So starting from the bottommost level, I'm going to check to see if there's enough space on every Z-level. Then on every layer, dig out this shape, which contains a 4x1 corridor for the pumps, as well as two access points, which alternate depending on the direction that water is being pumped from. After that's dug out, dig a channel or remove the floor that will allow the water to be pumped alternating across every level. Then starting from the second bottommost level, dig a channel between where the doors will be placed. This will allow power to be conveyed between each pump without the need for extra axles and gear assemblies. The top layer of course has an opening into the chamber as well as a wall grate that prevents anything from swimming or climbing back inside the fortress. Now we can build the pumps as well as doors that will prevent water from leaking out. And finally, you can either connect it to a source of power or rely on manual operation. I've connected mine to these water wheels and I can activate the pumps by pulling this lever that's tied to this gear assembly. The pump stack has finally been finished, and now a target is entering into the chamber. By pulling levers that are linked to these drawbridges, they will become raised and these traders will be sealed inside. And then by starting the pump stack, they can be easily disposed of. Then by opening these other drawbridges and exposing the drains, the water can be drained out into the caverns so my dwarves can go and pick up everything that they left behind. Another extremely useful thing that you can build with pumps is a mist generator. It's simply using four pumps to continuously move one tile of water around in a ring formation that falls one Z layer which generates mist but is then pumped before it actually spreads across the ground. This gives dwarves the happy thought associated with seeing a waterfall. To get the most benefit out of it, you should choose a location that has high traffic, such as a common used hallway or a tavern. To start with, it takes two Z levels, so check to make sure you have space on both. On the lower level, then place four statues arranged in a square with two tiles of space between each, and surround one statue with walls. Dig out a room on the upper level, and channel a space above each statue. You need to fill the walled off statue with water, so on the upper level use lowercase i and create a new zone. The zone should both cover the hole as well as one tile of land surrounding it, and assign it to a pit slash pond. Then use uppercase p to open the settings and use lowercase f to assign it to a pond. Ensure you have another zone somewhere assigned as a water source, and your dwarves will then start using buckets to fill the pond. Then place the screw pumps, with the first being orientated so that it draws water from the hole, and the rest moving it in a ring. 
build a connection to a power supply, and it will immediately start. It is then safe to remove the walls around the lower statue, and cancel the bond zone. And now your dwarves have a soothing place that will allow their harrowing existence to be a little bit easier to bear. Thanks for watching.